A lawyer arrested using DNA genealogy in connection with a decades-old series of rapes that terrorized Boston is out on bail again after facing even more charges of sexual assault. And now we are learning police had actually questioned him in the same case nearly 15 years ago. 35-year-old attorney Matthew Nilo uh, walking out of the Boston courthouse this morning after posting $50,000 bail. That's on top of the half a million cash bail that he posted just last month. Uh, Nilo pleading not guilty to seven new charges, including rape and battery. Uh, these new charges are connected to five attacks on four women in the North End section of Boston in 2007 and 2008. One of those victims was attacked twice in just 11 days. Last month, Nilo pleaded not guilty to charges. He attacked four women in Boston around the same time. He has now been accused of raping or sexually assaulting eight different women. Uh, meanwhile, we're learning police had actually questioned Nilo about the sex assaults all the way back in July of 2008. A local Boston TV station uncovering that detectives who were looking for the attacker spotted Nilo. They cased him until he got into his car. An officer uh, ended up actually pulling him over. A police report showed that the officer said he, quote, could smell a strong odor of marijuana emanating from inside the vehicle, and he saw what he believed to be marijuana on the passenger seat. Nilo was booked and questioned about the assaults but was only charged with marijuana possession. Anilo ended up agreeing to pretrial prob probation, uh, and the drug case was later dismissed. Fast forward years later, police used forensic genetic technology and genealogy to link the cases back to Nilo. The FBI recovered a drinking glass and utensils that Nilo allegedly used at a recent work function. According to prosecutors, the DNA from the glass actually matched DNA from the attacks, a move his lawyer plans to fight in court. If the courts will eventually rule on this issue of stealing somebody's DNA, analyzing it without a warrant. Okay, so joining us now, we've got a power panel. Tracy Walder, a former FBI special agent who has a deep understanding on how DNA finding works, and News Nation's national security contributor and, uh, and uh, News Nation legal contributor, Jesse Weber. He is also here with us. He's also an attorney uh, and anchor for the Long Crime uh, Network. Tracy and Jesse, thank you. Both have such long... Uh, d uh, titles. You're so distinguished, it's hard to get it all out, but I got it out. Okay. Thank you both for being here. Tracy, I want to start with you. Um, it's interesting they, they use the drinking glass and silverware uh, to link him to these cases. Now, uh, even more cases uh, have been linked. Do you think this is just going to keep happening? I mean, are, are they just basically going through old records and, and testing? That's a great question, Brian. The, the short answer is yes. I do think that they are going to continue to find these kinds of links. But I think the thing that's really important that we need to remember is that, you know, state uh, police offices and federal uh, federal law enforcement offices are really getting the funding now that they need to be able to do this. Back in 2019, Congress passed really critical funding that was needed for backlog rape kits to the tune of $151 million. And this particular department had $2.5 million to go back through these rape kits and look at them through this genealogical DNA. So that's really critical that we have the funding in place now to be able to do that, because without mm. the funding, we can't make these connections. Yeah, it's amazing because I remember when all these police departments had all of the uh, the rape kits just piled up in closets, and now they're actually able to go through them, and we're seeing this happen in real time, like in this case. But, Jesse, the lawyers um, are already indicating that, that they're going to go after this DNA evidence. It's pretty clear. Uh, do you think that's a good strategy? Do they have a case there? They have to do it. It's a good legal argument. I'm going to tell you why I don't think it's going to work. Now, they're arguing that this material was obtained illegally, that law enforcement didn't have a warrant to obtain it. Normally that would make sense, except this material was taken from a public area, which means the defendant had no right of privacy. We saw the same exact thing in a recent case. It was called the Jerry Burns case. This was a cold case, a killing from the 1970s. They linked it back to him, forensic ge genetic genealogy, through a straw that he left behind at a restaurant. And he fought that, said law enforcement didn't have a warrant. It went all the way up to the highest court in that state. And the court ruled against him, again, saying he had no privacy rights. So as much as they're going to make the argument that law enforcement obtained this illegally and that they want to make sure the jury never sees it, I think it's not going to be a winning argument for them. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider.
And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.